Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and tonight we're going to raise the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Now, I created N5D to get people to think outside the box while giving positive possibilities to what we can expect in the near future. Basically, we, we question everything and allow people to make up their own minds as reality is constantly changing every millisecond through our thoughts and intentions. So be careful where you place your thoughts as thoughts and intentions are manifesting quicker than ever. Joining me from the N5 studio is my co-host, Michelle Walling. How are you doing tonight, Michelle? Wow. Well, hi, everybody. I'm really looking forward to this show, and I tell you what, with Mercury in retrograde, it can only get better from here. Welcome to n 5 Radio. <laughs> yes, you know, and that's the, that's the first thing I thought about with, with all these glitches that are going on. Apparently, you know, and we're, Corey and I were talking about this earlier, and you and I were talking about this as well. Skype had some issues going on, and, uh, you know, people weren't able to use Skype at all earlier today, so there's something really funky going on right now and uh i had Corey on skype he's calling in right now so we're going to be bringing him in in a minute but uh how was your uh how was your weekend tell me a little about your weekend michelle <laughs> well since you were with me i'll share with everyone i had a great <laughs> weekend we went to fort lauderdale and i was a special guest on kelly coffee and Dwayne hartman's raw truth tour and I uh, spoke to the folks there at um, at their convention, and it was wonderful. We had a great uh, relaxing weekend, and we also met up with some uh, N5D authors. Um, you want to tell everybody who we who we had uh, lunch with on Saturday? Yeah, we we met for dinner with several N5D writers. Uh, Max Apodaca, who co-writes many articles with Lana, and Yolanda Arenas, who is an amazing tarot card reader with whom you'll be getting a reading next weekend. Yes, I can't wait. Um, she also has an ad on the right-hand side of the N5D page where you can uh, just click that ad and it goes straight to her booking. So I'm really looking forward to having that and uh, really enjoyed meeting Max for the first time. Actually, it's the first time for Yoli as well. So, yeah, and... So um, we had a wonderful weekend, and uh, we're settled back in for today. And just to let everybody know, I am unable to get into the chat room. I can see all of you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> but I'm unable uh, to log I'm logged in, but it says I'm not logged in. <laughs> so I'm unable to actually interact with you, but I can see your uh, – I can see what you're putting in there. So um, on this show tonight, we're not going to take – any callers at the end, but if you do have a very important question, be sure to put it in the chat. And I also wanted to, um, so we have all the technicalities done. I also wanted to mention um, that I have a new, um, we have a new show on N5D Radio, and that would be Candace Craw Goldman has um, QHHT Healing Show, um, and that's on Friday night. And that's at the same time as my show, uh, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Candace is a QHHT practitioner, and uh, she is going to be bringing on practitioners as well as clients with their experiences. And that will be awesome. We already had a, the first show on Friday night, and you can find that, um, let's see, on Blog Talk Radio at the moment. It will be uploaded on N5D's YouTube channel soon. And um, then my um, Cosmic Awakening show, you can always catch on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Don't want to plug that too much here. We're just talking about how much N5D has expanded. And, Greg, we also have the N5D network where I get on and act like a fool and have my picture taken. (laughs) (laughs) I have videos of certain topics. 
that I, um, you know, that I get an idea and I get on video. So anyway, um, all all of the Inside These shows can be found on iTunes. We also have classics like Helene Lipson's show with Matt Kahn. And Greg and Heidi interviewed Dolores Cannon. And one of my favorite shows of mine is uh, Dr. Simon Atkins, which has something like crazy 80,000 views on YouTube. So I'm really grateful for that to be able to get information out to people. So, yeah, let's get right to it, Greg. Yeah, well, also I just want to add, be sure to check out our N5D YouTube channel where we have over 113,000 subscribers and literally hundreds of videos. So definitely check that that out. Uh, So, Michelle, I'm really excited about tonight's show. Would you like to introduce our guest? I sure would. Identified as an intuitive empath, which is IE, with precognitive abilities, Corey Good was recruited through one of the MyLab programs at the young age of six. Good trained and served in the MyLab program from 1976 to 1987. Towards the end of his time as a MyLab, he was assigned to an IE support role for a rotating Earth delegate seat shared by the secret Earth government groups and a human-type ET super federation council. My lab is a term coined for the military abduction of a person that indoctrinates and trains them for a number of military black ops programs. Good's IE abilities played an important role in communicating with non-terrestrial beings, termed interfacing, as part one of the secret space program, SSP, as short for Secret Space Program. During his 20-year service, he had a variety of experiences and assignments, including the Intruder Intercept Inter- <laughs> Interrogation Program. You know, they have all these um, these letters for all these <laughs> programs they have. Um, assignment to the ASSR ISRV, which is called the Auxiliary Auxiliary, Auxiliary Specialized Space Research interstellar class vessel, <laughs> much more. And this all occurred in a 20 and back agreement from 1986 to 2007 with recall work until the personal day, present day. Good now works in the information, technology, and communications industry for, with 20 years' experience in hardware and software virtualization, physical and IT security, counter-electronic surveillance, risk assessment, and executive protection, and all that means don't mess with Corey, and served in the Texas Army State Guard from 2007 to 2012, C4I, which is Command, Control, Communications, Computation, and Intelligence. Time in the Texas Military Forces was unrelated to the Secret Space Program Service. Good continues his IE work now and is in direct physical contact with the Blue Avians of the Spear Being Alliance, who have chosen him as a delegate to interface with multiple ET federations and councils on their behalf, liaison with the SSP Alliance Council, and to deliver important messages to humanity. So with all that being said, with that wonderful introduction, Corey Good, welcome to N5D Radio. Thank you. I need to come up with an abbreviated version for hosts, don't I? (laughs) <laughs> it's all of those <laughs> letters and all those long terms, but we're really glad to have you on the show tonight and apologize for all of the technical difficulties and what we'd like to do this evening. Uh, oh, by the way, you and I actually grew up no, no less than 30 miles away from each other in, in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Isn't that something? Interesting, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you had a <laughs> way different childhood than I did. <laughs> as you were off uh, traveling around to Mars and different places like that. Uh, so, <laughs> but, um, so I appreciate you joining us tonight, and what we'd like to do is we're going to get right into the questions. And, uh, Greg, go ahead with your first question. All right. Well, I wrote an article on N5D <clears throat> called Corey Good's Gaim TV Interview and Voice Analysis. I have this uh, voice analysis software that analyzes people's voices and can tell me whether they're standing in their truth, if they're right-brained, which is the creative side of their brain, or left-brained, which is the analytical side, which notes in their cadence are the strongest and what notes, what each note represents and so on. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for sharing that article on your Sphere Alliance Facebook page, Corey. Sure. uh, That was interesting. Yeah, thank you. 
You know, after after running a voice analysis on you, I determined that you firmly believe in what you're telling people. Additionally, had, your voice analysis. Go ahead. No, no go ahead. Sorry, I'll, I, okay. I'll let you go. Go ahead. I, do, I don't want to interrupt you. All righty. Well, additionally, your voice analysis shows that you you are right-brained, which is the creative side, and answer more so by reaction than thinking out your answers, which is a sign of truth. Uh, that being said, how can you be sure that your thoughts and memories aren't my lab implants where you believe what has been implanted, but it ne- never actually happened? Well, I guess for the most part... Every single person on this planet is a certain amount brainwashed uh, and mind controlled. So um, every one of us, there's we're a certain amount. Um, there's a certain amount that we are uh, manipulated and controlled in the way we think and believe things. So you know that that's a given. But um, I have gone through a uh, a long process and I apologize for the sound in the background. My uh, <laughs> local, my local network at my house went down at the same time. Uh, I was uh, trying to call in with you guys. Um, wow. But yeah. Um, but uh, there, um, there's about three to 5% of uh, people that they have a very hard time with doing the blank slating and putting in the um, uh, screen memories. And those were the intuitive empath group. And it's mainly because uh, this group of individuals has a stronger connection with their higher self light body. And your memories are not only contained in your chemical uh, physical hard drive brain. They are also contained in your soul or light body. And that's how people actually are able to have past life memories. I mean, otherwise it would be impossible for a person to have uh, in their uh, physical brain to have past life memories when they were physically born into this life only. Mm -hmm. So when, when you have that connection to the um, that part of your being, um, you have access to those memories. And when they're blank slating you, they are, um, what they're doing is they're accessing your sort of physical hard drive. They're going into your actual brain and playing with your brain chemistry and electromagnetic fields in your brain. So they can... They they will do that with the intuitive impasse, and it will uh, sometimes it'll take shortly, but they are um, that group. They they have a they always had a very uh, uh, very big problem with uh, being able to uh, completely control and completely uh, 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 install screen memories on because uh, the individuals basically. Uh, would reboot and then have access to this uh, virtual hard drive or their uh, uh, light body soul memories. If that makes well, sense. Well, it does make sense. You know, actually, when you think about it, we're all having a holographic experience that's run by a program, and uh, the program is a light matrix, and then we have somehow we have this overlay from. I guess what you call the dark beings that have infiltrated this reality and and really have put these programs in, and that would be our education system, our political system, you know, the banking system, and we've agreed to the program, and that's what we're running here. So in a way, everybody is uh, mind controlled, and we also have implants. I was just wondering. I did a show on implant removal just recently. I was just wondering if you feel like that um, that you have some implants that you're having to work through and neutralize by centering and grounding and, and balancing because I know you can neutralize implants by doing that. Yes. All of us have them. Yeah, yeah and, so, and in, in 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 the programs they they utilize different types of uh implants. 
And uh, one of the things that uh, it's a little controversial, and uh, when I got onto this topic, this is where I had uh, kind of a falling out with the original people I was talking to because people have their own personal belief systems about this. But uh, they use entity attachments um, to um, as gatekeepers. So I had access to these memories, but they used entity attachments, these dark entities uh, that they would attach to your soul body. And uh, you would be able to access these memories, but whenever you would try to talk about it, you would, uh, st- you would stammer, have a speech impediment, uh, you would uh, have an anxiety attack, you would, uh, um, you would just be unable to speak it out loud, even though you would have the memory of it. And that was kind of a fail safe. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, I, you know, I found <laughs> that I had a, uh, entity attachment. Um, and, uh, I had to, uh, and there was a number of ways to remove them. And, uh, you know, it, I coming from a, uh, I guess more of a, uh, uh, Christian background, I used the name of Jesus in my uh, case, and uh, other people use different methods. And uh, I was able to remove that entity attachment. And uh, when and it ended up that there were quite a few entity attachments, and this one was the gatekeeper. Mm. And uh, when uh, the entity attachments were removed, I all of a sudden was able to speak out loud about it and was able to uh, write. I would have to kind of sneak around the entity attachment even when I was writing. I had to write uh, vaguely about it and write around the subject. Or if I would talk, I'd have to talk around the subject. I I couldn't talk directly about uh, my experiences or directly about, uh, you know, certain aspects of what I was involved in because – uh, this entity attachment that actually called itself the gatekeeper prevented me from doing so. And I know that sounds bizarre to a lot of people, but a lot of people that listen to this information, it doesn't sound bizarre to you. No, it doesn't. I mean, as I had, um, I think, well, first, first of all, by taking on a human body, I think we made an impl- implied agreement at this time to take on a human body in the fine print. It said, oh, and by the way, we're going to attach certain entities to your chakras so that we can control your emotions and take your energy from you. So it doesn't Mm -hmm. really sound, yeah. So, uh, and, you know, those can come back as well. So what we have to do, and I know that what you talk about a lot, Corey, is is basically, you know, living your life in truth and love and compassion. And uh, that really actually, I'm going to be doing a show on the Cosmic Awakening show in two weeks about how to um, neutralize these implants because this is all this is what we're doing here with ascension is we're raising our vibration and we're neutralizing this control mechanisms that this um, holographic insert has on us and that's how we're going to free ourselves. Yes, and with these uh, energy changes that are occurring, these uh, different types of etheric and uh, entity and all these different types of attachments, they're having a a lot more difficulty hanging on to us. And um, they live in uh, in a lot of people, like uh, there are certain types of attachments that people have. Like if you live with a person that is kind of a a vampire type, uh, they treat you badly and they seem to vampire off of your, uh, uh, your fear or your anxiety when when they treat you badly, well, a lot of times that person has some sort of an attachment that is uh, feeding off of that louche, I guess, and is also uh, sharing that energy with that person in a symbiotic kind of relationship. And um, as we're getting into this higher frequency part of the galaxy, these uh, these beings are not going to be able to handle this frequency. And uh, a lot a lot of people that have these, uh, what I was told by the uh, Blue Avians is that 
um, a lot of these, uh, especially the entity attachments, at some point in the future are not going to be able to exist in this energy field. They're going to, what they called, they said, was be cast back into the outer realm where they came from. And the people that have had these entity attachments are going to go kind of like through heroin withdrawal. That, you know, they've gotten used to this uh, symbiotic relationship with these attachments, and they've been sharing this energy with them that they've been vampiring off of other people. So, um, you know, it's this uh, topic that you're going to be talking about is a very important one, and because uh, a lot of people are going to be faced with these attachments because they're going to start seeing them and noticing them a lot more because they're starting to, you know, vibrate loose. They're starting to become more apparent because they're having a hard time hanging on. Okay, yeah, I totally agree, and I really appreciate you talking about this subject because it is very important. I don't want to put fear in anybody, and that's really why we're having this discussion, to give as much oh, no. information it's, as it, possible it should, people. It, instead of scare someone, it should empower them. It should make them... Uh, to know that uh, the, the time is short for these types of uh, uh, attachments and implants, that uh, they can exist in, uh, in, a, in a loving person, in a higher frequency person, and in a higher frequency environment, that, that's good news. That's not bad news. So what you're saying, though, is that while some people work on removing attachment, attachments from other people and they have that gift, what you're saying is that basically other people and everyone else that doesn't have them evolved will eventually have them removed, but they'll have to go through like almost like a heroin-like addiction type scenario. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All righty. Well, that's good now, for the healers to know what's going on. Yeah, and a lot of these people will just be acting really bizarre, kind of like – uh, a lot of people uh, use the word like kind of like an end time madness kind of behavior, um, you know, and, and it will it'll be very similar to someone coming off of an opiate uh, cold turkey, and um, you know these the people they will have uh, you know physical symptoms and uh, they'll they'll, um, they'll be acting out sometimes uh, very aggressively and th- I mean there will be. Uh, symptoms that a lot of these uh, healers, uh, Reiki type people, white workers, uh, will recognize and um, be able to to move in and and, and help the people with. Well, um, what's going to happen is, you know, they're going to find themselves without a source of energy because they haven't found the energy within themselves. And um, like you said, they're going to be flipping out, and some people are going to get sick, and unfortunately. Um, Some people will be leaving, you know, uh, eventually leave their body as they live out the rest of their life on the planet. But I just want everybody out there to know that on a soul level, everybody here already has a place, um, a vibration, a dimension to be going to. And it's uh, based on, you know, your soul experiences as well as how far you've gotten in this particular lifetime and awakening and doing the work needed to raise your vibration and neutralize these implants. So, so Greg, you know, another thing, uh, too. Yeah. Another thing, too, just um, I, I, that I wanted to bring up, Michelle and I have noticed this, and I'm sure you've noticed this as well, Corey, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of dissension going on amongst spiritual groups. And, uh, you, know, you know, you see people calling out other people. I'm not going to name names, and I'm not going to call out those people who are doing that because they know who they are, and uh, it's, it's not worth my time and effort to sink down to their level. Are you noticing the same thing, you know, all this division amongst spiritual groups, you know, the whole divide and conquer, conquer chaos thing? Yeah, yes, and you know, I, I've written an article about that, about uh, keeping your uh, reality bubble permeable, and uh, you know, developing, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's a very touchy subject for a lot of people. A lot of people have developed their own UFO religions and uh, belief systems, and it's it's hard not to do. We are genetically programmed. We've been genetically tinkered with to. Uh, to look to worship a higher being, to look to uh, uh, look for a leader, a guru, and that kind of a thing, and instead of looking inwardly at and, and try to develop our own co-creative consciousness and raise our own vibrations. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's 
you know, I, I'm not going to focus on any people or group in particular either, but, you know, this is also something that was done, has been done by design. And, uh, you know, ufology and, and all these different groups, uh, there, there have been people that have infiltrated it since, you know, the fifth, early 1950s. And uh, they've uh, wanted all of these people that they're um, at their root. They just want to love and they want to grow, but they move in and they want to keep these people fragmented and uh, at each other's throats instead of working together. Because they know that if we work together lovingly, and uh, our co-creative consciousness, consciousness together, and uh, you know we we <laughs> we're, we're very powerful. So if mm-hmm. they can keep us divided and arguing about our different esoteric theologies, then uh, you know they're not necessarily winning, but uh, they're putting off the inevitable. Yeah, they're they're keeping us distracted, basically. You know, look over exactly. here and focus on this while. We should be moving ahead and forward. Um, now, I've, I've seen numerous orbs of various colors all throughout my lifetime. Some people have claimed that all orbs are artificial intelligence, which I personally <laughs> believe is New Age disinfo. Do you believe that all orbs are artificial intelligence? No, and uh, if, if you've noticed, this is something that has come out fairly recently. Um, yeah. <sighs> This one of the one of the major things that I started talking about about nine months ago was I started talking about the uh, major uh, extra dimensional uh, ET uh, AI threat. That's uh, uh, a, a major threat throughout multiple galaxies. Ma- multiple ET groups are leery of AI of this AI in particular. And um, uh, the secret space programs heavily screen for any type of AI signal overlay in your, um, uh, like it's kind of like they do at EEG on you. And if there's more than one signal, you know, they can tell there's an AI signal. If there's any type of sign that you've been influenced by nanotechnology, they, these, there's a certain faction of the cabal group that are what we call AI prophets. And they have been using this AI that has a very, uh, very accurate uh, probable future uh, uh, type of program that has helped them stay one step ahead from being arrested or um, caught. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's been several times that there's, there's been some real programs that have been announced you know, that, you know, they were about to take down the cabal and the, this cabal group has been able to stay one step ahead using this, uh, this AI technology. And, uh, a lot of them see it as a God. And, uh, a lot of uh, the information that's been released about this has gotten them really upset. So, uh, what they're doing is they're doing the, you know, kind of kindergarten, I know you are, but what am I kind of thing. Um, Anything that is uh, sphere-related, orb-related, or blue avian-related, now all of a sudden it's uh, artificial intelligence psyop. Well, I've noticed I've noticed that, and um, you know, it's it's really funny because they they're panicking right now because of this wave of energy that, as you know, is um, already bathing the planet, but is supposed to be really strong here um very good timing for this show because this week and uh next week we really should be able to see some uh evidence of um some energetic forces that are bathing the planet that will pretty much shake things up and i've noticed that we've been able to see the truth come out on people who um really, you know, before we're saying, I mean, they could have said things for years that was the truth, but now they were just kind of hanging out a while, and now they're not able to lie anymore, and <laughs> their their true colors are coming out. So we're we're being able to use better discernment, and that's, that's really good. That helps out a lot. And um, 
So I was wondering if you wouldn't mind giving us, giving our listeners a little bit of clarification on what you see this wave of energy coming to the planet as originating from and how it will begin to affect people here besides the fact that you already said that some people are going to be actually when they feel it they're going to you know it's going to shake their world apart it's actually literally vibrating things that don't uh resonate with it apart but how will it affect those of us who are you know doing our work um will it give us psychic powers that we didn't have before what is your take Okay, well, I'll I'll start back um back in uh, the secret space program. They they've been studying this back since at least the 80s. The uh the energetic changes that are coming. And um it's it's not just this super wave that's coming from the center of the galaxy that people are talking about. Uh these uh waves have been coming from the center of the galaxy uh like crazy and it's it's been picking up in frequency for a while. I mean, this this is happening. But what's also been happening is that our local star cluster and solar system is traveling through this torus or torsion, giant torsion field that is our galaxy, and it's heading into a very high vibratory area of the galaxy. And they for a long time they were actually sending vessels out and these are actually clouds of high energetic particles giant clouds of high energetic particles and we are heading into these giant clouds of high energetic particles as well so that you know this it's not only these waves coming in from the center of the galaxy I, I just wanted to make that clear because I hear so much about the X waves coming in from the center of the galaxy. This is something that they they were studying for 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 decades now, and we're sending craft out to uh, to study these giant interstellar clouds of energy that our star system was. They knew that our star system was heading into. So we have a question in the chat room, actually, that's related to this, um, and it's from Kim Burnett. And Kim wants to know, have the SSP actually found a way to measure these incoming waves? Well, yes, they the, 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 those wave, they, they measure the incoming uh, waves from the, the center of the galaxy. They measure... Uh, cosmic waves of all sorts coming in from all directions at all times because there's a lot of different interaction that can occur, especially when they're doing portal travel, when certain types of cosmic uh, energy cross each other. There's a cross point, if, uh, and it can, it can cause feedback throughout this uh, uh, cosmic web. So uh, that's why they have a very... Uh, very complicated uh, uh, hyperdimensional mathematics uh, model that they use for calculating uh, a lot of this portal travel. And they also have to pay close attention to and have probes out to measure and detect all these different types of waves of cosmic radiation and uh, that are coming in from the center of the galaxy and coming out from other parts of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Now, now speaking of measurements, um, here's something I'm curious about. Time is only relevant to this planet, you know, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, 12 months in a year. How do other galactic races track time? Do they have calendars or clocks? Well, uh, they use, depending on on their local star system, they usually have kind of like what we have, like some sort of standard Zulu time or uh, some sort of standard time uh, for for their uh, local star system. And wherever they go uh, in the universe, they're working off their local star system time. In, in their 
uh, I guess their to keep their circa- their type of circadian uh, rhythm going, and uh, we do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So when you attend these alliance meeting meetings, how do other attendees know what the local star system time is in conjunction with everyone else, and on which particular day it would be? I don't know that they are given the other people's time. I think they are given the information in their time, but the the groups that are attending the, these meetings are these people are stationed here in our in our star system. They're living in embassies in our star system, uh, usually under our oceans, under underground, on our planet, on moons, or on other planets, planetoids. Uh, there's a lot of activity in the Kuiper Belt. They are most of these groups. Uh, they're pretty much live in pretty much embassies here in in this uh, soul system. Well, I have a, a question. Um, is in the chat room? Is there a specific date for the energetic wave to end, and will mm, will disclosure automatically happen when the wave ends? Well, the this uh, like I said, we're talking about uh, we have this uh, these energetic waves that people are talking about that are coming from the center of the galaxy, but we have just begun to enter these energetic, these high energy clouds. Uh, I mean, only since I believe like the 1930s or forties that they talked about, we started entering the outskirts of the, some of these clouds and we haven't really gotten into the, the most dense part of, of these high energetic clouds in this part of the galaxy that we're heading into that our solar system is heading into. So would that be still, the photon belt it, that you're talking uh, about? It, no, it's not. It's not the photon belt. These these are uh, actual just high energetic clouds that are dispersed um, out, and and these clouds are like the size of nebulas. They're, they're really large, and they're they're spread out through like a, a size of maybe um, like. Uh, this may even be too big, but like a, if you're looking down uh, on the uh, from the top of the galaxy as if it was a clock, um, maybe like uh, and, and cut it up into pies, slices of pie, maybe like a sixteenth of a uh, you know of a a slice that was maybe like a sixteenth, just a, a very small small slice uh, area of of the galaxy. We we didn't and, really get into. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. <laughs> I thought you were done. Oh, I, I I was going to 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 move on to the to the rest of your question about uh, yes. <laughs> uh, what we can expect. Um, that you know they they started to do a lot of uh, kind of some some unethical tests on on some people to try to figure that out, um, exposing uh, some people uh, in. Um, in uh, some of the, the research vessels that they took outside of the solar system, and uh, also some, they try to reproduce some of these energies in uh, chambers and expose un- people unwittingly uh, to some of these energies. And uh, and the the answer is it depends totally on your polarity. If you are a uh, positive or service to others type of self, you're going to become more so. <clears throat> if you're a selfish, uh, service to self kind of uh, negative person, you're going to become more so. So the the energy kind of uh, enhances what you already are. So it depends on what type, you know, how how you've been. Um, if you've been trying to put energy into uh, yourself selfishly, then um, it's going to make you more of a selfish, negative person. 
uh, in the beginning and uh, people that are loving, that are out trying to uh, help other people, it's going to make them more so. But uh, it, from what uh, they've found out, everybody is going to feel um, kind of, you know, kind of, kind of going to need some drama. Mean, if you know what I mean. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of, and um, it's, it's going to, it's going to have an effect on us to where, you know, we're going to feel it, and it's going to be a little uh, uh, confusing. Uh, it's going to cause some, you know, confusion, a little, um, a little bit, you know, some social problems between, you know, fam, uh, families and uh, um, people in the world that, you know, are interacting that are not of the same polarity. And as far as uh, superpowers, that also uh, is appearing to depend on the individual. Uh, you know, how developed they are already. If they have been, uh, if they're one of these people that, you know, sit in a cave and meditate a lot and are working on all these spiritual uh, practices in the East and are are really advanced already, then uh, they're going to be quite a bit ahead of everybody else that are, you know, working nine to five, sitting in front of the TV every day, and going to bed, waking up, and repeating the process the next day. So it's going to be more of, it appears that it's going to be more of a gradual process. You know, people aren't just going to wake up in the morning and then walk out, look both ways like Neo on Matrix, and then look up, put on their sunglasses, and take off and fly. Mm -hmm. Damn. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, sensing I, I, too. I, I, anyway, yeah, 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 it'd be it, it'd be nice, you know, it'd be great, but uh, uh, it's you know it's it's uh, you know I, I and I hate to to stamp on some, some people's some people's dreams, but uh, you know just it that the evidence that I've seen inside the program and uh, from what I've been told from. Uh, you know, some, in some of these meetings, it just, it looks like it's going to be a gradual process. And most of it has to do with each person's personal development. So it's like the change of seasons. Yeah. How did they test, how did they do this test, Corey? Did they, did they use HARP or CERN to send energetic waves um, around the planet? Uh, which test? The test, you said that they were already testing how this how this uh, this energy is going to affect oh, the planet. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they were testing it on individuals in uh in certain programs in the space programs uh oh, okay. unsuspect unsuspecting individuals like they would uh put people in a room that was a chamber and uh tell them to concentrate and work on this project and they would think they were working on some project and they were part of one thing when they were actually uh, piping certain energies in the room uh, that were as close as they could reproduce to the uh, the, the high energy uh, particle clouds that they were going and uh, shooting probes into and getting information from. And uh, they were also, uh, you know, when these vessels were getting very close to the to these uh, these high energy clouds, uh, the the fields from these clouds alone were affecting the people in the vessels. So um, wow. th- this is where, where they were g- gaining a lot of this information. Mm-hmm. We have a question from the chat room from Emily Benitez, who wants to know, to know what are all the best ways to ride this wave to benefit us the most. I guess. I always, I always go back to, you know, the the message, you know, that um, we need we've got to focus daily on being more and more service to others. Um, it is so important that we've got to work on being for very forgiving to those who have wronged us, and most of all, be forgiving of ourselves. 
and that's the hardest part, shining the light on the inside, doing the inner work, finding the the, the dark parts of ourselves that, that we try to ignore and, uh, you know, call ourselves light workers but ignore the little dark mm-hmm. parts, shine the light on there, forgive ourselves. I've had a lot of problems with that. And... Uh, and then move on and, and, and try to become more loving and uh, do all we can to learn more about raising our vibration and raise our consciousness and learn about the power of our consciousness. And because we're going to, we're starting, we're going to start learning more and more about the nature of the world around us, that everything is vibration, our thought, our, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, our bodies, the 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 walls around us, light, everything is is a is all vibration, and mm-hmm. our conscious our consciousness being thought is vibration, and our co-creative consciousness together, we can focus our co-creative consciousness together, and we can directly affect energy and matter, and therefore we can affect the our our reality yes that's what they 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 proved through that double slit experiment where focus intent changes reality and they've proven that through the maharishi effect uh virtually through the same thing where uh focused meditation significantly reduces uh violence throughout cities and whatever so yeah oh yeah it does make a it makes a huge difference and you know people are that are still asleep have a hard time understanding that process. Now, just getting back to one last thing about time, um, do any extraterrestrial races use astrology as a way of tracking time through various astrological cycles? I don't know. Okay. Because, you know, one of the things I follow here is uh, Pluto and Capricorn, and I'm seeing this Mm -hmm. huge cycle. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was in the 1700s during both the French and American revolutions. And uh, if you look around the world, what's going on right now? (laughs) Revolutions. It's a cycle of time. And uh, what we can expect, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008 and stays there until 2023. And right on schedule in 2008, we saw a collapse of all the these too big to fail banks. Well, all these banks except the too big to fail banks. And uh, we're seeing revolutions going on all throughout the world. And what it, Pluto does is it's known as the destroyer, and it tears down everything that's not in humanity's best interest. So what we can expect to see up up to the year 2023 is a collapse of money, government, and religion. And we're already seeing a collapse of all three right now. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, yeah. And, uh, you know, because, you know, we have uh, our bodies, we have a strong bio neural field and, um, the, the universe is actually a, uh, bioelectric universe and a torsion field universe. All of these, um, bodies in our solar system are going to have a direct connection and correlation with each person, just like I explained on Gaiam television in when I was talking about portals, how the sun has a filament connection with every planet in our solar system, an electromagnetic Mm -hmm. filament connection. And um, there's a large torsion field around the sun and every planet well, of course, you know that our bio neuro field around our body is a torsion field, mm-hmm. and we're we're going to have a type of connection with everything in our solar system as well. And when people have made the comments, everything in time and space is connected, that is literally true. Everything in this universe is connected, and and probably in many different ways, but it's been proven through portal travel and uh, the uh, uh, hyperdimensional mathematics model they use that every single point in space and time are connected and they use that information to, to travel. I was wondering about in our solar system, um, there's a lot of people out there that are talking about Saturn being the projector 
of this matrix and it comes from Saturn to the moon and there's programming on the moon, which you know a lot about moon the moon we'll be talking about that next. How does mm-hmm. Saturn play into the interaction with Earth? Because a lot of people want to blame Saturn, you know, blame uh you know, the black box being in front of the sun and or behind the sun and there's a lot of talk about this, but what do you know about it? Well, the Saturn has quite a lot of uh, ancient and current extraterrestrial 